Everybody says that intelligence, cyber and space are priorities in the Ministry of Defense, French Ministry of Defense. But when you look at the budget, space is less than 5% and it's actually it's less than 4% of the budget of the Ministry of Defense. So the question is, should we put more money on space capabilities? My opinion is yes, we should. Hey, Space Watchers, and welcome. This is Space Cafe Radio, your radio channel dedicated to emerging trends and live conferences in the space sector. And this is a special episode. I'm Thorsten Krinning, publisher at spacewatch.global. PSSI, the Prague Security Studies Institute, has a pleasure to present Space Cafe Radio, PSSI Space Security Miniseries, a radio series focused on allied preparedness to face the rapidly changing space domain. PSSI is a non-profit, non-government public policy organization founded in 2002 and based in Prague. In space, PSSI puts emphasis on emerging threats and available policy solutions. All the interviews in the PSSI Space Security Miniseries were conducted during the 6th PSSI Space Security Conference held in Prague at the Channing Palace, the headquarters of the Czech Ministry of Foreign Affairs from the 19th to the 21st of June 2022. The conference is part of the PSSI's well-established series of high-level trilateral space security conferences where for trilateral we mean Europe, US and Japan. The conference series launched in 2011 is designed to advance decision-making within the security domain among allies. They represent one of the highest level of unclassified gathering of military allies, national security experts and senior industry representatives. My guest on this fourth episode is Major General Michel Riedling, commander of the French Space Command. We spoke about the French space defense strategy and goals for a European Space Command. Enjoy our conversation. Your 2019 French Space Defense Strategy is still in delivery, so how are the effects on the Space Command ongoing construction process? We are a very young command. We were created, like you said, in 2019. So it's almost three years now, but we have made very quick and significant progress, I think because we had a mindset of a startup in this big organization, which is the Ministry of Defense. In all our lines of operations, like generating the expertise, either technical or operational, innovating, being in touch with startups uh, to implement uh, new technologies in our uh, space programs, defining the future architectures, defining the future capabilities, defining our needs in terms of infrastructures and buildings and space operation centers, so we did this with a lot of agility and this mindset of imagination, courage, and the idea of being very fast and to go fast. So again, I don't want to exaggerate what we did, but I can say that we are very proud of what we did, even though some things did not go as fast as, of course, all the time we should have preferred. But let me give you some examples. We are very proud of this Asterix exercise that we had in 2021 and 2022. 2022 being the second edition open to European partners and very successful event. And I'm, to be honest, I'm a bit afraid of what's going to be the third edition because the change in terms of uh, scale of the size of the size between the first and the second edition is so huge that I'm afraid of what's going to be the third edition. So very uh, proud of what has been done and uh, still working hard to continue this pace of innovation and progress. Is this Asterix exercise French only exercise or is it NATO or allies exercise? Let me say that originally it was initiated by the French Space Command. But I don't like to say it's a French exercise. Well, it is because we initiated this exercise in the first edition or we had already the participation of Germany, even though it was very modest contribution, but Germany was there and the US, remote participation from the US. But the second edition, we wanted this edition to be much more open to European partners. So we had a much more significant participation of Germany, of Belgium, of Italy and the US fully participating in this exercise. And we had 27 observers, countries sending some teams to see what was the exercise, the main uh, takeaways, lessons learned. 
And uh, among these observers were the European Commission and the Alliance NATO. And definitely the intent is to have a very open and multinational exercise. So it doesn't make any sense to say it's, a, in my opinion, to say it's a French exercise. We want it to be a European exercise involving all the partners, the European Commission and the NATO partners as well. So it sounds for me similar to SECT, where also companies or observers are allowed for specific parts. Is, is that comparison correct? Not exactly, because SACT is much more a capability development exercise where the US detests the contribution that commercial partners can bring to the overall capability in terms of space domain awareness. So even though the military are very much involved and we had three centers uh, running the exercise over the globe, one in the US, one in France and one in Australia. But it's much more about integrating commercial partners in the overall capability. Asterix is really an operational exercise with a very credible scenario, geopolitical scenario. But it's not only an exercise where you train your military personnel to get to improve their expertise. It's also an exercise designed to experiment and test organizations, process doctrines, specifically for the Space Operation Center, and then to get some experience and feedback from this exercise to adjust the organization of the Space Operation Center that we are building right now in order to be operational in 2025. And this is also a kind of capability development exercise because we have some takeaways from this, how we organize the mission network. So we build a mission network with all the limits that we have today in 2022, but it gave us some insights about how to organize this in terms of capability architecture and HPC data processing, uh, exchange of information between all the players. And also it has uh, clearly a political dimension because in the 2022 edition, we had on the Distinguished Visitors Day, we had a visit of 11 or 12 Minister of Defense, of Secretary of Defense uh, of European countries, plus Commissioner Thierry Breton. Uh, so we are very proud of this. And again, I think it's a good way also to federate something about space, uh, defense and security uh, in Europe through this uh, exercise. Thank you for clarification. Space is important for France, obviously. So what is the French perspective on space and how it can reconcile with the strategic interests of the EU and NATO? Oh, it's like a space launcher. It's uh, something at two or three stages. And uh, in my opinion, the first stage was uh, to have our own view, our own space defense strategy, to have our own analysis on threats, risks, challenges, stakes. And then when we were all aligned in France with this strategy published in uh, 2019, then to have talks with our partners in Europe, in the EU and NATO. And this is what we did mainly Uh, during the 2019-2020 year time, and then to promote, and this is what happened actually, the elaboration of a space defense strategy at the European level. And uh, it was one of the priority of the uh, French presidency of the European Council. And uh, so first we had the strategy in which this document was released in March 2022. And in this document, space is mentioned as a very a strategic uh, priority and the idea of having this European space defense strategy is written and approved by all the member states of EU and now we are working on this under the lead of the European Commission and the external section service and with a very ambitious tempo supposed to be released end of 2022 beginning of 2023 so this is the second stage I would say then to aggregate all the players and around a common vision. You've been very vocal here also on this conference that France pushes for greater military capability to protect space assets and how it fits into the entire EU strategy, EU SST, action service and so on. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? This is a very difficult question because, as I mentioned during this conference, the world is evolving, moving very rapidly and things are changing There are so many questions about the role on the missions of national space agencies, for example, compared to the European space agencies and the European Commission. And then how do the Ministry of Defense take into account all these space issues and, and challenges? So everybody is trying to find the best way to connect the dots between all of this and reorganize all of this. So I don't have right now a very precise answer to your question. 
What I can say is that we have to take, it's also something like Russian doll, you know, something. Each country is developing its capabilities. And these capabilities has at some time to be put to the benefit of the alliance, whatever the alliance is, the European Union or the NATO alliances. And this is the principle of NATO. Uh, they don't have any NATO capabilities. Mm -hmm. The NATO capabilities are provided by the nations. So when Germany, when France build significant space capabilities, this is a very significant contribution to the alliance. And the other, when the EU develops some uh, space capabilities and, for example, the European connectivity constellation. We look very uh, carefully at this because we do think that there are defense and security application on this constellation that benefits to uh, the Ministry of Defense and to uh, enhance defense and security on the European soil. Very obvious question to ask these days is related to the Ukraine war and its consequences. Has the Ukraine war had any effects on the French space activities, space capacities? Was it an enabler or an eye-opener? This event comes along with the French elections, French elections, presidential and uh, parliament elections. And at the same time, we have this crisis and even this war is not more than a crisis. We will have in some way a kind of, I don't know, probably not a white book, But a strategic review, again, to review all the challenges that we face and how the world has changed since 2017, which was the previous strategic review in France. And then we will take the lessons for the future, for the next procurement law. And my opinion is that, and everybody says that intelligence, cyber and space are priorities in the Ministry of Defense, French Ministry of Defense. But when you look at the budget, space is less than 5% and it's actually it's less than 4% of the budget of the Ministry of Defense. So the question is, should we put more money on space capabilities? I'm not talking about cyber because it's my domain, but and my opinion is, yes, we should. It's not that expensive. If, even if we had only instead of 3.5%, let's say 5 or 6%, you would have a tremendous improvement in space capabilities. And these space capabilities are not brought to the table for uh, the space domain. They are brought to the other domains to enhance their efficiency on the ground, at sea and in the air and in the multi-domain uh, concept operations as well. My last question is, what is your vision for a common European capacity in space security? Well, it's, a, it's a, again a very difficult question. You have only very difficult questions. I think it's very difficult. It's like a, a very famous sentence. I had a dream. And in some way, a Commissioner Thierry Breton said uh, once, and it's uh, an idea of him, we should have a European Space Command. It's a long shot from now to <laughs> the, the date when we will have such a European Space Command. But yes, why not? The thing is that we all cooperate, collaborate, exchange, trying to build at least not integrated, but linked and interoperable capabilities and uh, space operation centers. That could be the basis for further development and integration. But this is not only a technical and operational uh, question. This is also a political question. So it's far above my pay grade then. Thank you very much for your time. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Space Cafe Radio, PSSI Space Security Miniseries sponsored by PSSI, the Prague Security Studies Institute. PSSI is the organizer of the sixth Space Security Conference in Prague, which is part of the high-level trilateral Space Security Conference series launched in 2011. The next episode in this miniseries will feature Kevin O'Connell, founder and CEO of Space Economy Rising. And if you want to stay on the pulse of the space industry, please visit our website at www.spacewatch.global and subscribe to our newsletters. And of course, don't forget to become a Space Watcher. I'm Thorsten Greening, publisher at spacewatch.global, your independent perspective on space.